Hello readers, today's story is A Valentine for Frankenstein by Leslie Kimmelman and illustrated by Timothy Banks. All over town, monsters were getting ready for the Valentine's Day bash, taking slime bath, teasing and tangling their tails, and sharpening their claws and fangs. In his castle, Frankenstein was getting ready too. He looked in the mirror. His skin was a ghastly shade of green. His head was almost a perfect square. His flower was droopy and near dead. Still, the other monsters all made fun of him. Just two eyes, said Smellabella. No tail, said Werewolf. He looks almost human. And he's nice, sneered Spike. Blech! I don't believe he's a monster at all, said Brains. But Frankenstein was comfortable in his own green skin. So he stitched on his crookedest smile, dressed in his worst tuxedo, and set off for the party. What a fiendish fiesta! There were revolting contests, repulsive snacks, and a real, live band. Well, kind of live. The cupcake decorating contest was first. Three-Eyed V made a cupcake called, This Icky Eyeball is Watching You. Wartina's creation had fungus filling and toenail frosting. Frankenstein made the grossest cupcake he could think of. He held it up to the judges and smiled. You call that a monster cupcake? Smellabella jeered. No bugs, no slime, and glitter on top? Three IV threw a cupcake at his face. Bullseye, said Frankenstein. Good aim, V. Next came the banana slug pie eating contest. Frankenstein was super speedy. He thought he would win until he wiped his mouth with a napkin and was immediately disqualified. That's not how monsters eat, Buster, Spike snickered. He put a pie on the floor, stomped on it, and then he snarfed the pieces from between his hairy toes. That's how monsters eat. Wow, said Frankenstein admiringly. You're very talented. The last contest was for burping. Frankenstein's was the loudest, longest, smelliest burp he'd ever made. You call that a burp, said Stinker. That was a cough, a hiccup. It was almost a giggle. Brrrr. Just then, a monster burped so loudly the ground shook. Way to go, Belcher, yelled Smellabella. That was epic. Frankenstein had never seen Belcher before. She was taller than he was, with piles of tangled black hair and a beautiful smile. Awesome, said Frankenstein, smitten. Before Frankenstein could congratulate Belcher on her terrifically disgusting award winning burp, the band began to play. The monsters were wild about dancing. Mummies unwrapped, fangs flew, a skeleton named Bones fell to pieces. Luckily, Frankenstein was there to lend a hand. Belcher boogied like a pro. Frankenstein tried to copy her moves, but during the zombie Roomba, he fell flat on his face. It was hard to Roomba with two left feet. When he stood up, he noticed something sticking out of his pocket. It was a Valentine's Day card. For me, thought Frankenstein. It was his first Valentine ever. Which school could have put it there? Was it you, Rainbow? He asked, holding up the card. 
Rainbow answered by spilling at him in five colors. Impressive, said Frankenstein, cleaning his face with his handkerchief and sighing softly. As if, said Headless Harriet, before he could ask. Then she removed her head and threw some purple glop at him. The soft glop didn't hurt, though his feelings did. Still, cool color, Frankenstein managed to reply. Frankenstein searched the card for clues. The card was zigzag shaped. The writing was red. It had a whiff of something stinky and wonderful. Just then, Belcher stopped by. She had a red marker in her pocket. She had a zigzag stripe in her hair. She had a wonderful stinky smell wafting off of her. She had to be his secret valentine. Frankenstein tapped Belcher on the shoulder. She turned around and let out a deep and awesome burp. Please be mine, Frankenstein. She said sweetly. <laughs> Frankenstein grinned so widely, some stitches popped. He gave Belcher a warm wristband. She gave Frankenstein a piece of snot-flavored bubblegum. The other monsters noticed and wondered, what did Belcher see in him? I've never met a friendly monster before, gushed Belcher. He's my kind of monster. He did notice my perfect aim, said Three-Eyed Ivy slowly. And my monster manners, observed Spike. His extra body parts come in handy, mumbled Bones. I guess it's okay to be nice sometimes, Headless Harriet added, remembering that Frankenstein had liked her purple glop. If that's the kind of monster you are. The music started up again. The monsters joined together in a ginormous, kicking, spitting, burping, gnashing, glittertastic conga line. Every kind of monster was welcome. After all, a monster is a monster is a monster. The end. Thanks for watching.